Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Harsham Ali Khan. So far, 10 problems I have completed on time value of money. The concept is very important for the functions of finance manager. All the financial decisions will be taken by considering the time value of money. The value of money will change from time to time. The purchasing power of money will not be same. It will change. So whenever financial decisions are taken, this fact must be considered. So already I have explained in the theory video regarding the concept of time value of money. If you have not watched, I suggest you go to the playlist of my channel, select the subject uh, financial management new, select the video of time value of money, be perfect about the concept, then you can understand the problem. So far 10 problems I have completed in this video, the remaining problems I am going to explain. So before starting the video, I expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which I have given in the link under my description. And also you take the printout of the compound value table and present value table. Because without that, it will be difficult to make all calculations on the calculator. So take the screenshot of the points which I have written on the board, then I explain every point. Come on, see the 11th problem. Mahesh deposits 2 lakh rupees in a bank account which pays 10% interest. How much he can withdraw annually for a period of 15 years? That means what is the annuity value of the deposit? Presently he is depositing 2 lakh and the banker is paying interest at 10% per annum. So for 15 years, so what is the annual amount Mahesh will get from the bank? That's what we have to calculate. So annuity means the constant amount, how much he is going to get. So simply we apply the formula deposit made today 2 lakh rupees, rate of interest 10%, amount, annual amount receivable for a period of 15 years. We know when the annual amount is constant, we use annuity table. The present value is equal to constant annual cash inflow into present value of annuity factor at 10% rate of interest for 15 years. By using this formula, we can find out how much is the annual constant cash inflow, how much Mahesh will get every year from bank. So here present value, how much deposit he is making, 2 lakh rupees deposit. Constant annual cash inflow, we have to find out. And the present value of annuity factor at 10% for 15 years. So already, I have given in the link the table values. Two table values are there. The present value of 1 rupee and next page it is present value of annuity. Right? So here we need annuity. 10% 15 years. Here 10% column and 15 years it comes to 7.606. 7.606 is the PV of annuity table 10% 15 years. Right? So in this equation, annual cash inflow is unknown. So take this 7.606 to the LHS. So this multiplication will become division. So 2 lakh divided by 7.606 is annual cash inflow. So if you divide, you will get 26,295. So annually, Mahesh will get 26,295 every year for a period of 15 years. If you deposit 2 lakh rupees right now. Now, 12th problem. See the problem number 12. Given the time value of money as 10% discounting factor. Actually, discounting factor will be used to find out the present value. Then, uh, you are required to find out the present value of future cash inflows that will be received over the next 4 years. We cannot make annuity because the annual amounts are different. It's not same. First year 1000, second year 2000, third year 3000, fourth year 4000. So every year the amount is different. So what is the present value of all the cash inflows we are going to get in the first year, second year, third year, fourth year. Discounting factor 10%. Easily by making a table 
we can find out the present value. The present value of future cash inflows 10% discount rate year 1, 2, 3, 4. Annual cash inflows are given. Now PV factor 10%. You can calculate the PV factor 10% on the calculator or by using the table. So PV of rupee 1, remember not annuity, PV of rupee 1, the 10% point 0.909, 0 0.826, 0 0.751, 0 0.683. These are the present values at 10% rate for first year, second year, third year, fourth year, fifth year. Suppose if you want to calculate on the calculator, the so simple calculator, 10% means 1 divided by 1.10. So 1 divided by 1.10. Just you press is equal to, you will get first year. Then is equal to, you will get second year. First time is equal to 0 0.909. Second year is equal to 0 0.826. Is equal to third year 0 0.751. Is equal to fourth year 0 0.82. Uh, eight, uh, 683 that's it the so same values will get multiply 1000 into 0 0.909 909 2000 into 0 0.826 3000 to 0.751 4000 0 0.683 the total present value of cash inflow is 7546 this is the method of calculating the present value when annual cash inflows are not same next 13th Calculate the present value of annuity, 500 rupees received annually for 4 years when the discounting rate is 10%. Now in this case also we have to find out the present value but the thing is the annual amount is constant annuity. So we can calculate by making this table or shortcut by using annuity factor. So it is better to use annuity factor. This table we can make use if the annual cash inflows are different. But if it is same, if the annual cash inflows are same, we can find out either by making this type of table or by using PV of annuity factor table. So here I am using the formula for PV of annuity factor. So PV of cash inflow is equal to constant annual cash inflow into present value of annuity at 10% for 4 years. It is given 4 years. So constant annual cash inflow is 500 rupees into now PV of annuity, annuity table. So this is the PV of annuity table. 10% 4 years. It is 3.170. 3.170. Multiply 1585 is the present value of 500 rupees which we are going to receive at the end of first year, second year, third year and fourth year. Discount rate is 10%. That's it. Now 14th problem. Find out the present value of annuity of 3000 rupees over three years when discount rate is 10%. Exactly similar to the previous problem. Here every year 3000 rupees we are going to get. PV of annuity of 3000 receivable over a period of three years at 10%. The present value is equal to constant annual cash inflow into PV of annuity factor 10% 3 years. So 3000 is the constant annual cash inflow and PV of annuity factor 10% 3 years if you refer the table you will get 2.487. Multiply 7461 is the present value of rupees 3000 which is receivable every year at the end of first year, second year, third year. Next, 15th problem. A person has borrowed 3 year loan of 10,000 rupees at 9% from his friend to buy a motorcycle. If the friend requires 3 equal year end repayments, then calculate the annual installment. Again, annuity. Immediately, he has taken a loan of 10,000. The present value is 10,000. Now constant cash outflow we require, 3 installments, 3 constant cash outflow we require and the PV, uh, present value factor, the PV of annuity factor at uh, 9% for 3 years. So here present value is equal to constant annual cash outflow into PV of annuity factor 9% for 3 years. The present value is 10,000 and constant annual cash outflow we have to find out. 
and PV of annuity factor is 2.531. So if you bring this 2.531 to LHS, it will become division. So 10,000 divided by 2.531, 3,951 is the annual cash outflow. That means the person has to pay every year 3,951 for a period of three years. Next, 16th problem. An investor has an opportunity of receiving 1,000 first year, second year 1,500, third year 800, fourth year 1,100 and fifth year 400 respectively at the end of one through five years. So every year he is going to receive but the amounts are different. Find out the present value of this stream of uneven cash inflows. If the investor's rate of interest is 8%, just now we have done. If the annual cash inflows are not constant, uneven, in that case, better to make a table to find out the present value of cash inflow. Here, year 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Annual cash inflow, first year 1000, second year 1500, third year 800, fourth year 1100, fifth year 400. Given in the problem. Now we require PV of rupee 1, not annuity. Annuity will be used when same amount is receivable. But here same amount is not there. So PV of rupee 1. So present value factor 8%. First year 0 0.926. Second year 0 0.857. 794. 735. 681. You can refer the table. Or by using the calculator. 1 divided by 1.08. 1 divided by 1.08. Is equal to. You will get first year. Is equal to again second year. Like. Now multiply the cash inflow with PV factors, PV of cash inflow will get. The total comes to 3,927.6. This is the present value of uneven cash inflows for a period of 5 years. Next, 17th problem. Let us find out the compound value. Here not present value but compound value, the future value. Let us find out the compound value of 1000 interest rate being 12% annual if compounded annually, semi-annually, quarterly and monthly for 2 years. That means what would be the value after 2 years if we deposit 1000 rupees right now. The present value is 1000. What would be the future value after 2 years if interest is annual or quarterly? Now, semi-annually or quarterly or monthly. In four cases, we have to find out. So, already we have discussed the compounded value. Compound value is equal to PO into 1 plus R to the power of N. CV stands for compound value. PO, present value 1000. R, rate of interest is 12% per annum. N is 2 years. Now, we will substitute the value in the formula. Annual compounding. If interest is paid annually, then simply we substitute PO is equal to 1000, rate of interest is 12%, 0.12, and number of years are 2. So 1000 into 1.12 square. So 1.12 square, either on calculator you find out, or you can use the compound value table. In compound value table, for 2 years, 12%. Here 12% for 2 years it is 1.264. So compound value 1.264. So 1254 is the compound value after 2 years if interest is paid annually. Now semi-annually. Semi-annually means twice in a year after 6 months. First 6 months then seconds. 2 times he is getting the interest. In this way so slightly we change the formula. Here, FB is equal to 1000, 1 plus 12 percent is the annual rate. When annual rate is 12 percent, semi annual will be 6 percent. So 0 0.12 divided by 2, it is 0 0.06, 6 percent. Now we multiply compounding period. Earlier it was 2 years. Now in 2 years, 4 times he will get the interest. Four times because per annum two times for two years four times so two into two four times he is getting the interest so 1.06 to the power of four that means six percent four years if you see the compound 
if you see the compound sum of 1 rupee how much percentage 6 percent 6 percent 4 years it is 1.262 1.262 1262 similarly quarterly quarterly means in one year four quarters are there so four times interest is compounded so 12 divided by 4 so you will get 3 percent per quarter 3 percent so 0.12 divided by 4 it comes to 0 0.03 or 3 percent now we multiply how many times two years in one year four quarters two years eight quarters so 2 into 4 8 so 3 percent instead of calculating on the calculator we can use the compound value table 3 percent for 8 years 8 periods so here 3 percent 8 periods it comes to uh, 1.267 1.267 1267 now if uh, interest is compounded monthly monthly means 12 times in a year 12 times in a year interest is compounded the 12 divided by 12 the so monthly it comes to 1% so the 12, 0.12 divided by 12 you'll get 0 0.01 0 0.01 comma plus 1% every year 1% so 1.01 to the power 24 why 24 in one year 12 months two year 24 months so 24 times interest is compounded so 1.01 .01 to the power 24 so you can see the compound value table 1% under 1% against 24 periods 1.270 so 1.270 multiply 1270 so this is the end of problem number 17